Hi, good to see you all. Today we're going to be talking about Imperial China, looking at the fall of the Han Dynasty, and the period of disunion, and finally the Sui Dynasty. You see it's spelled S-U-I, but it's pronounced Sui. It's okay. So, we left off in ancient history with the Han Dynasty falling. And so the Han Dynasty, we see, had a pretty significant amount of territory, primarily focusing on the east coast of China, which we know the majority of the population is there, because the rest of it, we remember, is hilly, mountainous, um, in the north, dry. For a period, they had this region over here, which is going to be called the Western Territories for the Silk Road. And we can see how they have cities lining along that route to go. But near the end of the Han Dynasty, those areas are going to be lost. So, the Han Dynasty collapsed around 620 AD. Now, there's a time when... Some people say the Han fell earlier than that, and we have the Eastern and Western Han, sometimes referred to as the New and the Old Han. Uh, but by 220, every historian agrees the Han was completely gone. Uh, we know that one of the problems was the emperor chose aristocrats to rule. In fact, he had people pay for these positions. So, for example, to become chief of police, you paid the emperor money to be that job. Now think about this. If you have your chief of police paying to um, get the job, he's probably not a very honest person who you don't want making sure everybody else is honest, right? Um, and all of the positions were like this, where uh, rich people were given the job because they had money, they paid for the jobs, uh, and then they didn't do their jobs. So things like the Silk Road fell into disuse because it was too dangerous to be used. While the whole time, the emperors, they were just busy partying. So, we use that term bureaucracy. What is a bureaucracy again? Who can remember our ancient history vocabulary word? Well, if you said a large government, you are absolutely correct. Or you could have said a government with lots of people in it. Now, like we said, these aristocrats did not have the ability, and therefore they were bad at their jobs. Now, we have a government that's not governing. During the Han period, we're going to have the Yellow River, the Wanghe, also known as China's Sorrow, change course. We have this tremendous natural disaster that killed thousands of Chinese. So nature is rejecting the emperor. The people, therefore, should do what? And that is, of course, overthrow the dynasty. The Han lost the mandate of heaven, so the people rebel. And there are actually numerous rebellions against the Han, so it took several before they were actually overthrown. Remember, a dynasty is a ruling family. So, we get to our period of disunion here. Now, during this time, we have different people saying, well, I should be emperor, and other people saying that they should be emperor. So these warlords are going to fight for control of the land, and this is going to be a horrible time to live in China. Um, because basically, if you were just a regular person, you were going and suffering the most. Um, you know, Warlord Caleb might come to your farm and demand all of your crops, or they burn it and kill you. So you give them all your crops. Well, then, guess what? Warlord Aya then comes, asks the same thing. Or, you know, we have 
warlord Jaden coming in and saying, all right, guess what? You guys are now in my army. So we have the warlords constantly going fighting over the land. If you didn't listen to them, they killed you. They stole their stuff. Um, you might have to go and go into debt and give up your land to the warlords, and you're forced into their armies. It's not good. Then, other areas of China start breaking away. For a period of time, Korea, which we see over here, the Korean Peninsula, was part of China. This is when Korea breaks off and asserts its independence, which it will be independent from China for roughly a thousand years after this. There'll be a period where China kind of rules them as a puppet. Parts in the south break away. And another thing that happens that is going to be incredibly influential is Buddhism becomes the dominant religion in China. Think about back to what did Buddhism teach? Remember, Buddhism taught that suffering can end. You can have total happiness. It didn't matter your social position. You know, in India there was the caste, and they said the caste that's not true. Everyone is equal. So think about this. People are suffering badly, and here comes a religion that came from the Silk Road saying suffering can end. It becomes incredibly popular. There's hope. We have the Four Noble Truths. Of course, those are that suffering is present in all things, or some other people say life is suffering. And then they say suffering is caused by wanting. So hopefully you're starting to remember then that therefore the only way to stop suffering is to stop wanting. And how can you do that? Well, you follow the Eightfold Path. All right. So this period of disunion is not forever. It is going to end when we get to the Sui Dynasty. We're going to have a man named Wen Di. He's a general. So one of those warlords. He will eventually defeat the other warlords in battles and declare himself emperor. Now, Wen Di, he's going to rule. And uh, we generally view it as a good um, period of Chinese rule. We then have his son, Yang Di. Um, he's going to have a failed attempt to conquer Korea. Um, the Koreans will beat him back. And that is going to cost a lot of money, cost a lot of Chinese lives. And that's going to wind up hurting his rule. He is, however, going to wind up repairing the Great Wall of China. Now, it's still not the amazing Great Wall that we see in pictures today. Actually, very little of the Great Wall looks like the pictures you see. That was all done during the Ming period, which is going to be about a thousand years after the Sui. Most of this Great Wall was made of sun-dried brick. Um, also, some of it made some minor areas with stone, but wood and actually, like, literally soil that they just packed extremely tight. But he's going to fix the breaks in the Great Wall that happened during the Han period. Because, of course, they needed to protect against the northern barbarians, our descendants of the Huns and then eventually the Mongols. He's going to rebuild the city of Chang'an. Um, Chang'an is going to be burnt at the end of the Han period, part of the rebellions. He's going to rebuild it. He's going to build it bigger and greater than it ever was before. And he does something which is going to be incredibly important. He builds the Grand Canal. In that geography PowerPoint, it talked about one of the challenges in China was connecting northern China to southern China. We have the Huanghe River that's flowing in the north, going east to west. And we also have the Yangtze, or the Chengzhong River, flowing east to west in the south. So we have your pockets of population there, and it's hard to get goods and things going from the south to the north. The south is going to be where they're going to grow a lot of their food. Well, this Grand Canal is going to connect those two great rivers and allow tons of trade and prosperity to come to China. If you don't know what a canal is, it's a man-made river, essentially. So, 
This is going to be a huge economic improvement for China. In fact, it's something that is going to still be used today. Um, and for all of the rest of Chinese history, this is an incredibly important thing that was created. But the peasants were forced to do the labor. Thousands died working on the canal. Taxes were humongous to go pay for the building of the canal. And here's the sad thing. While that canal was being built, there were peasants starving. But Yang Di loved to take pleasure cruises up and down the canal where we'd have huge feasts on it, where they're eating all sorts of delicacies, him and all of his friends. And there would be the peasant farmers along the canal, because of course the canal is also making it so there's more water for more fertile farmland. And they're starving because they're paying these high taxes for, you know, his failed wars, road building cities, going and building the canal, fixing the Great Wall. And when they're done with the food, they don't pass out the leftovers to the needy. Those starving peasants saw Yang Di and his friends just throw the food overboard. How's that going to make you feel if you're starving and you see food being wasted? So we see the Sui Dynasty, although they ended the period of disunion, they are not going to last very long. So here we see the territory controlled by the Sui. We see the Grand Canal and the Green that are connecting these important waterways. Here you see it today. Isn't that gorgeous? I love this picture. It's so good. <laughs> but yeah, it's still used today. It's so important what they did. And um, China, like I said, are going to, is going to prosper from this. Another picture, a little less gorgeous, not in a metropolitan area there. By the way, that's actually some legitimate Chinese court music. Uh, this actually comes from the Tang period this time, which we'll get to the Tang uh, tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful day. I miss you guys. See you later. Bye. It's not shutting off. <laughs>